Hi everyone, I hope you're all well. So it seems the middle generations of the British royal family have cemented their status as climate activists. This is nothing new when it comes to Prince Charles. He's been on the environmentalist bent for decades. He even met up with Greta Thunberg last year. Two of the most unqualified people in the world lecturing the entire population of planet Earth on how to live their lives, but hey, at least they're not Alyssa Milano. Unsurprisingly, Prince Harry and sadly Prince William have also taken up the climate mantle. Prince Harry, along with his wife Meghan Markle, infamously lectured the British public a couple of years ago on carbon emissions only to, equally infamously, get sprung taking four private jets in 11 days to and from a nice little getaway at Elton John's holiday home in France. Prince William's entry into climate activism is a very recent development when last month he launched a series of climate action awards and in an interview for the BBC, admonished billionaires for not putting their considerable resources into more environmentally minded causes. This space race is on at the moment. We've seen everyone trying to get space tourism going. It's the idea that we, we need some of the world's greatest brains and minds fixed on trying to repair this planet not trying to find the next place to go and live. However, the varied contributions of these royals to the climate of hysteria, <laughs> I made a pun, must be contextualised. I mean, how much of a problem is it really that these public figures with no legislative power are opining about the climate? Aside from the fact that, you know, from the perspective of someone who lives in the constitutional monarchy of Australia, that is me, the main function of the monarchy is to remain apolitical or the whole thing falls on its face. Because, make no mistake, climate change is political. Not just because it feeds directly into government policy, but because there is a reasonably large contingent of climate activists out there who unashamedly advocate for climate policy to be used to usher in a form of socialism. The prime example being US Congresswoman and Democratic Socialist Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and her Green New Deal. Anyway, Prince Harry, for all of his opining, really does nothing other than jump on whatever's trending culturally, largely it seems at the behest of his wife. Hence the fact he jumped from agonizing over the climate to agonizing over mental health in the space of like a couple of months. Culture rolled on, and so did Harry. Also, side note here for any YouTube reviewers who may end up reviewing this video. I am not denying climate change. I believe in the existence of climate change. I am a climate centrist who is willing to listen to all sides of the argument. Climate change is real. I am not spreading climate misinformation. Just so we're clear. Prince William, to his credit, has structured his recent climate activism around encouraging innovation within the private sector. As I mentioned, he has recently launched the Earthshot Prize, five awards to be given annually to individuals and organizations who provide technological solutions to various environmental issues, from the oceans to the air. Nothing to do with lobbying governments and everything to do with creating healthy competition between private entities to come up with the best ideas. And the only people he picks on are billionaires who, let's be real, probably really do not care. As such, one could put Prince William's initiatives in the humanitarian rather than political category. And this is a good thing, as the beneficiaries of inherited wealth and privilege, the royals have a, a long tradition of philanthropy and humanitarian work. It's what they do, and they do it very, very well. And unlike his little brother, Prince William has maintained that tradition and actually done something useful with these Earthshot Awards. Prince Charles, on the other hand, is a different matter. Far from the immaterial opining of Prince Harry or the private sector initiatives of Prince William, Prince Charles has been utilising his climate activism to lobby governments for some time now, both at home and abroad. He even admonished Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison, leader of a, a Commonwealth country, by the way, for his initial indecision about attending COP26, uh, sorry, COP26. Scott Morrison, the Australian PM, isn't even certain that he could make it to the meeting in Glasgow? I, is that what he said? He? he did say, yeah. yeah. He said he's well. spent enough time in quarantine. I mean, what would you say to world leaders about why they should come to Glasgow? Well, that's what I'm... <laughs> try to say all the time and and the point being that this is a last chance saloon literally because if we don't really take the decisions that are vital now 
it's going to be almost impossible to catch up. This is a problem because, as I mentioned earlier, the function of the royals within a constitutional monarchy is to remain apolitical, and it is very, very important they maintain that. A constitutional monarchy like Australia is a system of government in which a monarch, who in Australia's case is Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, shares power with a constitutionally organised government. That is, the Queen is Australia's head of state, and the Australian Constitution allocates the rest of the government's power to the legislature and the judiciary. So, while Her Majesty doesn't have any legislative authority, she can be called upon to dissolve a government if they become corrupt or incompetent, which incidentally has happened. Google Gough Whitlam. Also, if you've made it this far through this video, you must like my content a little bit, so if you like this content, why don't you subscribe to my second channel for more of my content? It's called Daisy, and it is my fun, silly, sometimes totally non-political channel where I will discuss everything from, you know, life updates to film and book reviews to historical profile videos, you look to, to even ghost stories. I've got that up there. Uh, the link to my second channel is in the video description. It is also in the pinned comment. Please, please like and subscribe and watch the latest video on that channel. That link is also in the video description and the pinned comment. I would really, really love to have you there. We are just having so much fun. This is opposed to, say, a constitutional republic like the USA, where the president is the head of state. And therein lies the distinction. The USA, as a republic, has a political figure as the head of state who has executive power, which has its pros and cons. Australia has a constitutional monarchy and has a non-political, non-partisan figure as its head of state, with no executive or legislative power beyond very occasional case-by-case -case intervention in leadership. And in my personal opinion, this is a much, much, much better way of doing things. The big appeal of Australia's system is that, theoretically at least, having an apolitical head of state reduces the chances of corruption in leadership, provides checks and balances when needed, and ultimately helps facilitate a more peaceful nation. But it does rely on the monarch, that head of state, remaining apolitical. So it's much to the dismay of many Australian monarchists and royalists that the royal family has been engaging in such blatant political posturing lately. Not because we don't believe in climate change, but because it means the royals, those unelected officials, are undermining the whole system and paving the way for Australia to become a republic. Which, to a monarchist like me, is not a good thing. Prince Charles is literally shooting himself in his royal foot with this stuff. But look, let's be real, he probably doesn't care. Not because he doesn't care about Australia at all, but because he cares more about something else. Something that, to a member of the most elite faction of the global elite, the royals, would be vastly more important than whether or not a peasant nation that used to be a penal colony, and still is in many ways thanks to our COVID policies, chooses to retain the British monarch as its head of state. I'm talking, of course, about the Great Reset, a plan advocated for by the World Economic Forum for big business to collude with big government to completely restructure the global economy using the tools fostered through COVID-19 geared towards a new form of capitalism for a supposedly sustainable future. To create momentum for the Great Reset, we need to capture the imagination and will of humanity. We must redesign systems and pathways to advance net zero transitions globally. This would be the most dramatic act of responsible leadership ever seen by the global private sector and would at once provide a catalytic incentive for the public sector to follow. Now before we go any further, for, again for any YouTube reviewers who may be reviewing this video, I am not spreading a conspiracy theory. I am not spreading misinformation. The Great Reset is very real. It was officially showcased in June last year with Prince Charles at the head of that showcasing by the World Economic Forum. That clip I just showed you was from his speech at that launch event. It is in the WEC's online materials. I have put all of the sources in the video description. Prince Charles even has an entire page dedicated to the Great Reset on his official Prince of Wales website. There is also a YouTube video on the Royal Family's YouTube channel discussing the Great Reset. There are multiple articles from mainstream media outlets discussing the Great Reset. There is nothing conspiratorial about it. It is all out there in plain sight. Again, just so we're clear. 
As such, anyone who says that the Great Reset is a conspiracy theory is a willfully ignorant moron. Boris Johnson has spoken about it, Justin Trudeau has alluded to it, and although Biden hasn't explicitly said anything, I'd say there is a reason his campaign slogan last year, Build Back Better, is the same as the official slogan of the Great Reset. And that slogan was also on the banner behind Boris Johnson when he spoke about it, by the way. We human beings will simply not content ourselves with a repair job. We see these moments as the time to learn and to improve on the world that went before. And that's why this government will build back better. The likelihood of all of that being a coincidence is very, very small. So what is the Great Reset? Well, I'm going to let my Sky News Australia colleague, Rowan Dean, explain that to you. It is a global commitment they have made to use the panic and fear generated by the coronavirus as a means to reshape all our economies and laws and move to a new form of capitalism that focuses on net zero emissions. The plan involves replacing shareholders of big companies with stakeholders who happen to be left-wing bureaucrats and climate change zealots. Replacing mum and dad small businesses and private enterprises with big tech and big business. Democracy and free enterprise go out the window, totalitarian government control slides in through the back door. Also, if you would like me to do a deep dive video on the Great Reset, please do let me know in the comments. It is a pretty compelling subject to say the least. I would be happy to do a total video dedicated entirely to that if you would like to see it. So please let me know. Given the sinister and, you know, gargantuan effect the Great Reset would have on the lives of every single person on the planet, it's probably not the most appropriate thing for an unelected beneficiary of inherited position and privilege, which is what Prince Charles is, to be lobbying for it, am I right? It is this kind of specifically political climate activism from a royal that presents a material problem, especially as Prince Charles is heir to the throne, and it has left a bad taste in the mouths of everyone who supports Australia's status as a constitutional monarchy because of that appeal of an apolitical head of state. And even for those who don't support living in a constitutional monarchy, the behaviour of Prince Charles is still seriously bad news. See, whenever I make videos about the royals, I always get comments along the lines of, you know, why are you talking about these people, Daisy? They're totally irrelevant, they're meaningless nowadays, etc. That is a fundamentally incorrect assertion. The royals, certainly the British royal family, are not irrelevant at all. While they no longer have any legislative power, they have a huge amount of influence worldwide at the highest levels of the public and private sectors, both for good and for bad. The Queen's influence is good. She has always, for 70 years, remained firmly out of politics. She has always been a unifier, which is the role of the head of state of a constitutional monarchy, and she does it beautifully. And while I'm sure she has a mind towards environmentalism, like the rest of the family, the only time she has ever entered the climate change debate was quite literally by accident, when she was caught on a hot mic saying this. And even then, she was clearly alluding to China and Russia who were not in attendance at COP26. And given the scale of their emissions, it is fair enough that Her Majesty was having a go at them. Prince Charles, on the other hand, will likely ramp up his public political lobbying when he becomes king. And given what his stated goals are, this will be a terrible thing. He can have enormous influence, at the very least in the private sector, which, as he said in his speech introducing the Great Reset at the World Economic Forum last year, will inevitably cause the public sector to follow, as is his intention. So for anyone saying the Great Reset is communism or fascism, both comparisons are wrong. The Great Reset is closest to neo-feudalism, a state of being where democracy is tokenistic at best, actively suppressed at worst, in which an elite ruling collective of business leaders, big corporations and bureaucrats own everything and ration material items out to the masses by quite literally renting them to them. Don't believe me? Have a look at this video from the World Economic Forum from a few years ago.
and as a descendant of the feudal era, like Prince Charles, promoting a system for the little people based on the principle of you'll own nothing, but you'll be happy, would simply be par for the course. While it seems abhorrent to us, this kind of neo-feudalism would likely be as natural as breathing in Prince Charles's mind. Now again, I would like to make something very, very clear. I am a monarchist and also a royalist. I have a deep level of respect and reverence for the royal family and especially for the enormous amount of philanthropy they have done for decades and decades. But when the philanthropy spills into political activism, as it well and truly has in the case of Prince Charles, as a constitutional monarchist, I take serious issue. As the saying goes, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But sadly, there is a chance the monarchy could become very, very broken indeed if the core principle of its functionality is abandoned by an activist heir. And if that happens, certainly Australian constitutional monarchists, and in fact, monarchists around the world, might start sniffing around for an Australian republic if that continues. If you like that video, please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave me a comment. And if you really, really liked it, then check out the video description for my subscribe star link and other ways you can support me.